Curry, Mr. Bejeron's on. Don't forget the popcorn, Frank. Coming, dear. Um, so quickly, and, and a couple of things to emphasize a couple of things that Jackie said. First, it is those folks, it is Elder Services of Cape Cod and the island that decides in terms of, for mass health purposes, whether Mary is actually eligible for nursing home care, right? They're the kind of the, kind of the we, gatekeeper. We, we, do, we do what's called a, uh, an assessment of need uh, for, for the clinical services that are provided at a nursing home. We have nothing to do with the financial right. application for mass health. Right, but they decide whether clinically you hit those ADL numbers or for whatever reason are qualified for nursing home care. And then whether, and, and if you are, then therefore you are also eligible for this choices program. And then they also decide if it, it, tur it turns out that financially Mary is eligible for the choices program, what the, what the services are that need to be provided in order to keep Mary in the community. And once they decide that, MassHealth pays for it. Right? So it's, it's, they are the, the kind of the gatekeepers on all of this stuff. So I want to talk briefly, as Jackie said, they don't do, they don't figure financial eligibility, that's, that's a separate issue, right? So <clears throat> financially, we're just back with the same numbers. You remember these numbers, right? So what if Mary wants to stay home as opposed to going to the nursing home? Well, in that case, Mary, if, if she is, she needs to qualify for Mass Health, but because she is otherwise eligible for nursing home care, or if they determine she's otherwise eligible for nursing home care, then the, the Mass Health standards are different than they would be if she were just poor, just a poor person living in the community needing to qualify for Mass Health. She needs to have less than $2,000 in countable assets, but her income can be a little over $2,100 a month. Now, Mary's income, of course, is quite a bit below that, right? And Frank's assets are not counted at all. Frank can have unlimited assets. So in that situation, for Mary to be financially be eligible for the Frail Elder Waiver Program, or for the so for which, which is called in Massachusetts the Choices Program, right? Mary could simply shift all of her assets to Frank and qualify. Um, Frank would then, of course, as, he, as in the other case, want to change his will so that if he dropped dead the next day, Mary did not become automatically disqualified by virtue of having inherited all this money in the house and everything else, right? So he'd want to make sure that assets were being held probably in trust for her benefit, probably by, by her daughter. So, so there is a, a fairly, you know, it, 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 there is an easy way to get Mary qualified. And even if she were above that asset or that income limit, and there are folks, well, there are probably some folks in this room whose fixed incomes when I mean fixed, I mean pension, social security, right? That those, because if you had other kinds of income, income derived from an IRA or a 401k or a whatever, or an annuity, then in this situation, and, and if Mary had any of those, I'd simply say to Mary, cash it all in, unfortunately, pay the taxes if you've got a tax deferred piece of uh, asset, and shift it all to Frank, right? But you can always qualify. So the question then is, Oh, and, and then just going back to this, this income issue, Th there, is a, there is a ceiling on Mary's income above which she would have to pay a substantial deductible in order to qualify for these services. And that ceiling is 300% of the federal poverty level. The federal poverty level is now, I believe, $721 um, and, and some pennies. Three times that turns out to be $2,164. That's kind of like the magic number, $2,164 per month. If she earns more than that, she can still qualify for this program, but has to pay a large deductible, a deductible which, it, which, is, which is going to equal roughly the difference between her income and $1,200. It's going to be her income minus around $1,200, just in, in round numbers. But the bottom, the, 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 the bottom line, the point of this is Mary can qualify, and Mary can get benefits. And, and if she has late stage dementia, then probably the only program that Jackie was describing, although they have a variety of home care programs, the only one that's gonna work for Mary is one that's gonna provide a lot of hours of home care. The point of this also, though, is if Mary qualifies, 
and, and, but there just aren't enough hours being provided through that program. She can still, she can't because she has no money, Frank can still buy additional home care hours for her. So that if it turns out she needs a totality of hours that is greater than what MassHealth is providing, in this situation, remember, Frank and Mary have some, they're not rich, but they ain't poor, right? So they could provide some additional assets. So I, I wanted to ask uh, Sandy Cordoli to talk a little bit about that. Sandy is a geriatric care manager. Many of you know, you know her background. She worked with the VNA here for many years. What is a geriatric care manager? Once again, this is a quick refresher course for, these, for, for people who haven't been here. Um, it's a new thing. Well, it's not new anymore, kind of, but it's, it was 15 years ago. It was written, when my mother was in a nursing home, none of this existed, right? There are people who typically were social workers or nurses who have decided that they are very interested in working with elders and want to focus on helping elders figure out how to navigate this system, right? And how to find care and kind of figuring out what kind of care would be appropriate. A whole set of things, right, which are all kind of what Frank and Mary need right now. So I'd like um, Sandy to talk about, based on her experience, what, <coughs> how all of this stuff can fit together, right? What kind of home care can fit, how, how you kind of coordinate all of this stuff. And I'd also just like to have you mention the role in, in that, from your perspective, of Leslie's program, of social daycare. And then I want Leslie to talk a little bit about social daycare, right? How's that? Oh, sorry. you got no slides. I have no slides. What a sad thing. By the way, you know, you'll notice that the, 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 the handouts that you have aren't quite the same as the slides. This is all my fault. You know, thanks, you know, it was Labor Day just a week ago, and I made the mistake of taking two weeks of vacation on Martha's Vineyard this year, and I didn't do anything, so these are a little screwed up. I'm sorry. So geriatric care managers have been hanging around for a little while, but certainly with the population that we all live in now aging at the level that and at the speed that we're all aging, geriatric care management is becoming an essential service, isn't it? So what geriatric care managers are also often described as the air traffic controllers of elder care, which kind of fits. Um, the other thing is, is that sometimes I'm called a rent -a daughter service. Um, so that, that's kind of what we do, is my business partner is Beth Toomey, who you all know as the retired police chief from West Tisbury, and um, the two of us opened Horizons Geriatric Care Manager a couple of year, care management a couple of years ago, and I became certified as a case manager so that I could help elders figure out all the programs. Jackie did a great job talking about the federal programs and, and um, the statewide programs that she runs, and there's tons of them, and, and your heads have got to be spinning with all of the information that's getting thrown at you besides you know where you can purchase all these services or what can I get for free or where do I get all these services and who are these people that are going to come and provide the services and and then dear God I've got to figure out if I qualify financially and what is he talking about shifting assets and so geriatric care managers sort of specialize in that in trying to help you navigate that along with the other programs that the um, Commission on the Blind offers um, we have programs that we use for that, the Alzheimer's Association. There's lots of other little pockets of finances out there if you need to adapt your house um, and put a ramp on your house or adapt your bathroom because mom is no longer able to use it all that well because it needs bars and things. So geriatric care management helps figure all that stuff out. Where do you get those services? How do we get them paid for? Um, if it's not from, you know, if you don't want to pay for them or you can't pay for them. So that's the kind of stuff that we do. Um, we also refer lots and lots of our clients to Jackie's program or to an elder law attorney who can help you get some of the, the big paperwork. The packet that has to be filled out in order to get onto Mass Health is, is gigantic. And, and it's overwhelming and it feels like climbing Mount Everest. And sometimes we can break that down for you into smaller little packets smaller little projects and help you get through all of that stuff. What was the other part? So now, you want, now I want to talk about the care itself. How, so, as a practical matter, how does it work? How so as a Mary, practical matter... How can Mary, without talking about the money, right, as a nurse, right, 
in this situation, how can Mary stay home and what are the typical issues or obstacles to Mary staying home? So yes, I am, I am a nurse and I've been working with geriatrics for about 20 years. And, and sometimes it's just as simple as your spouse or your parent who you're caring for have Alzheimer's and can't be left home alone all day, but you've got to keep working. And, and, and so we turn to programs like the Frail Elder Waiver and the Choices Program, which can hopefully bring in as much help as you need during the daytime so that mom or your spouse is home and safe and someone's caring for them while you're doing the reality of the work, which is paying the bills and having a job and, and maybe even just something as simple as going to a bridge game because nobody can stay in the house seven days a week, 24 hours a day, keeping an eye on someone. And the choices program and the frail elder waiver, and once you get through that mountain of paperwork and you get all of that done, are fabulous programs, but here's the reality is there's a staffing shortage through the agencies on the vineyard and they can't always provide as many hours as you get awarded. In fact, right now, we're getting lots and lots of people on the Choices Program and there's just not enough help to go around at this point. So then you can hire that privately. So we can, as geriatric care managers, we can help you find that within the community. We can help you find qualified people who Beth Toomey and I know and would leave with our parents to help you do some of that care. The other program that is just one of my favorites, I'm going to put my name on the list now, and because God knows by next week I'll need it, is the, is the um, supportive day program. I just want to hang around with those people all day. It's an amazing program. It's truly an amazing program where elders can go during the daytime. I, I'll let Leslie describe it. She does that better than anybody. Um, but this is a program that we also help get people signed up for. As I was running out the door thinking I was going to be late today, I was on the phone with Eileen, one of the directors of that program, and we were just discussing how a couple of the people that we've referred to the program are doing and increasing the days that they can be there. There's lots of little pockets and this is an amazing community for helping us take care of our elders, but do you know where all of these services are and how to access them and how to get them paid for by somebody other than you? And that's what we try to help you do. And I also left some pamphlets over on the table if you need them. And we'll be here to answer questions afterwards.